Hello, my name is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, and I'm here to provide an update for February 10th, 2021, where I'm going to talk about a local runaway and the general topic of why kids run away and hopefully what we can do to limit that. The Rock Springs Police Department is investigating the runaway report of 16-year-old Frankie Simmons of Rock Springs. Um, according to a press release from the RSPD, he was last seen on the night of February 8th at his home. He is described as being six feet tall, weighing 150 pounds, and having brown eyes and brown hair. He was last seen wearing a black hoodie with a red Nike uh, logo and white Reebok basketball shoes. Anyone with information regarding his um, whereabouts are asked to contact the RSPD detective unit. Um, the number to get a hold of them is 307-352-1575. Or you can send a message to the Rock Springs Police Department Facebook page um, in reference to case number R21-03-12-0. As always, uh, tipsters may remain anonymous. Runaways happen a lot in the country. I um, googled a bunch of different sites and honestly I couldn't find anything from the last couple of years. Uh, but it's the type of thing that is extremely common. Um, um, when it comes to reasons for running away, um, they're primarily related to stress because um, no matter what age you are, you're probably going to have stress in your life and it's not fun to cope with. Um, 8 to 80, anything in between. Um, some common reasons, and I'm, not, it's, and I'm talking generally, I'm not, um, I don't know anything specifically about um, the um, Simon case. Uh, I'm just talking, it's uh, just talking about the broad topic. Uh, but reasons people run away, especially kids, include abuse, uh, violence in the family, parents separating, uh, divorcing, or possibly the arrival of a new step-parent, a death in the family, um, a birth of a new baby, or perhaps just the addition of more kids, um, one of those um, instant families, half-brothers, half-sisters, uh, family financial worries, um, Kids or parents drinking, or um, drinking alcohol, or taking drugs, um, that type of abuse. Uh, problems at school, peer pressure, and failing or dropping out of school. Like I said, it's a lot of cases where uh, people, they're worried that they're going to be in trouble, or they recognize they're in trouble. And the idea of a world without parents, without rules, without consequences... That's, that's tempting, and a lot of people don't realize that that's not what awaits them when they get out of the home. Um, what it's, um, many people don't necessarily recognize um, what it takes to be properly fed, clothed, um, just keeping warm. Um, just even going out on a hike this type of year, you can be uh, caught unawares with starts out all nice and sunshiny and it gets cold. It's, it's a short-term solution that usually doesn't even um, work in the short term, let alone long term, if people find themselves on, it's on their own for an extended amount of time. Dealing with stress is something that people should spend a lifetime working on. Um, and one of the best ways to avoid runaways is to help kids develop problem-solving skills, coping mechanisms. How do they deal with the challenges that are ahead of them? How do they put things in proper perspective? Um, steps to help them build those skills include helping them know their emotions, um, help them better understand um, what they're feeling inside, and how to communicate it. Um, and that might sometimes might might be words. Sometimes it you could be writing in a journal. Sometimes it might be art. Sometimes it could be music. Um, learning how to healthily express your emotions, uh, kind of parallel to what we've talked about. Um, helping them know that they shouldn't be afraid to tell people what they're feeling. Um, and 
even with some of those emotions that are often la labeled troublesome or negative. Um, anger is something that people need to know how to express in a healthy way. Um, there are a lot of trouble, troubles that we have today because people never learned how to um, express those extreme um, emotions in a way that is constructive um, as opposed to um, deconstructive, destructive. Um, everyone needs to be able to learn how to express um, angry feelings without violence. Um, it's also important to teach people how to calm themselves um, after they're upset. Sometimes part of the trick is recognizing that you're upset. Um, I try to do it. Uh, that's something that I sometimes at least acknowledge. Okay, I'm upset and I can't handle this well. And just acknowledging that sometimes helps me tap the brakes. Um, and then, like I said, finding um, methods to um, decrease the heat, to, to bring yourself down. Um, I know some people get really active, like maybe go on a run, um, go on a swim, listen to music, draw, write poetry. I did a lot of journaling when I was younger. I still do that to a lesser extent now. Um, the idea is to find something, a safe way to help people feel better. Um, another tactic that, that's, um, or lesson that people are encouraged to teach their kids and keep working on themselves is to, when they encounter a problem, try to come up with a list of solutions. Um, bring in somebody else to um, bounce uh, ideas off of. Um, if you can't, it's uh, brainstorming is a great it's deal. Collaboration, um, and also follow the follow the train of thought. A couple links in the chain. But by that I mean, if I do this, what would happen next? If I run away, what would happen next? I'd probably end up hungry. Um, what would happen next? I'd be desperate for food or money to get food, what would happen next? I may put myself in a situation that would be uh, dangerous to myself. Um, and like I said, try to plot it out. Don't, it's easy to knee-jerk react. That's, a lot of us have that initial knee-jerk reaction. Um, it's quick and easy to be impulsive. It takes more time to plot stuff off out. We can avoid some of these more um, self-sabotaging um, choices, um, coping mechanisms, if we're just trying to better uh, get better at gaming it out, especially bringing in a friend. And then one of the last suggestions is to um, teach kids that they can seek help from um, a trusted adult. Uh, it might be a parent, a close relative, um, teacher, neighbor. Let the, it's, help them identify people in their lives that they know that they can count on to support them and um, deal with them honestly and directly. Um, one of the things that I, I've, I've just personally learned is that sometimes I just need to recast the situation I'm in because sometimes the voices in your head are just buzzing, um, screaming, and you want to say that I'm helpless, I, I can't deal with this, I'm overwhelmed, there's not a way I can do with it. And sometimes you just need to go pause and go, well, it would be more accurate to say, I feel helpless. I actually have options. I have, um, I have people around me. I have some experiences that I can draw upon. I have, um, I'm very blessed to have um, my faith in God. Um, it's love from family. Um, a kitty that you may or may not have even heard faintly meowing in the background. These are things that I can draw upon. Um, like I said, I may feel helpless, but that doesn't necessarily mean I am. I may feel overwhelmed, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I can't do anything. Um, that's just something that um, I've tried to better apply over the years. And it's still sometimes that's something that I have to sometimes pause and take a breath and go, just because I feel this way does not necessarily mean that that's I... Um, I may feel screwed, I may not necessarily be screwed. Um, I may not necessarily be um, beyond help. I'm usually not. And most people, um, if they be honest, are not beyond help, aren't beyond reaching either. Um, one other thing that, that I found on the tip of results is just to um, teach your kids that if they're thinking of running away, um, or they hear about someone running away, talk to an adult. Um, 
like I said, back to that list we talked before. A teacher, maybe your pastor, maybe a family friend, uh, maybe it might be someone in your family, um, your grandma, per perhaps. Or uh, one resource that's out there is the National Runaway Switchboard, uh, which is um, operated 24 hours a day. Its number is 1-800-629-4000. That's 1-800-621-4000. I spoke before, 1-800-621-4000. Um, switchboards, um, personnel is available for people who are talking about um, to talk, whether you're thinking about running away yourself or you know somebody else who's running away and you're trying to figure out how to help them. People shouldn't be, um, when they come to challenges in life, they shouldn't be left to face them alone as much as possible. There are going to be times where you feel like you're isolated or you feel like you're alone. But if you pause and you try to take in the greater scheme, I'm hopeful that you'll find that you're not alone on the playing field. And there's others that you can turn to. Um, whether um, waiting to give you advice in the dugout or maybe just right beside you and you, um, in your initial moment of panic, fear, stress, you didn't notice it till just now. I'm hopeful that we... Um, are mindful of what we could do to help people deal with stress and, de and uh, developing coping mechanisms. Please keep your eye out for Frankie Simon. Um, there's a picture along with the story at therocketminer.com. And like I said, just be um, looking for opportunities to let people know that um, they've got support, they've got help that they can turn to. This is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, wishing you a good day and a safe tomorrow. Bye.